Boy, these Aaron Sands are Aaron. Hi everyone, it's SK95. Welcome back to more Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. I don't know why I mentioned Aaron Sands. Last time we finally opened the Lanero Mining Facility after getting all the dials open. And this time, we're going to head on to the Lanero Mining Facility. Alright, so we just need to climb all the way up and go in. Lanaru Mining Facility. You'd think the sand would fill up everything, but it doesn't. So keep an eye on these new enemies because. Okay, finally I can analyze them. These are Arcanas. These larval monsters are said to live for a thousand years, during which in time they continually grow. Though its larva is small in size, it's quite ferocious and has not been found in swarms beneath sand. It tends to leap towards moving objects such as yourself. Yep, smack. They die instantly and it can also drop that item. That's actually quite useful in case you want to make sure this is so. You want to bring this in the ancient metal, the metal that I have equipped to me right now. You want to swing rapidly, I got it twice. So yeah, you're gonna pretty much run into these items and you're probably running into those items a lot. So yeah, you're pretty much gonna get that gloop no matter what. So keep an eye on any area you can bomb as well as everything else. More toads, so as you did last time, throw a bomb over to it and let it blow up. Right between the eyes, stocks. There we go, all dead. Back. 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 There we go. Now, you want to bring out your beetle, of course, and get the hook beetle over to the area over there. I'll let you know right now, you can technically come in here if you go over to Gobazo and try to go in here, maybe with some upgrades. I would recommend doing that if case you're not comfortable trying to do this area without any upgrades. Because there is some upgrades available now that we've gotten a bunch of items. Okay, so let's go and press the switch. The gate's opened. You want to open the left one because the right one actually is both this. You want to actually go into sand and then start running because if you try to run right before you go into sand, you're actually going to run out of stamina very quickly. There's another treasure chest, so let's go and grab it. Wait for our stamina to get back up because stamina takes a little bit of time. There is a recommendation I recommend doing if in case you're going in this area like the first time that there is a potion at the potion shop that lets you increase your stamina. So you want to grab that potion and that way you can gain extra stamina as well as make sure your stamina is at highest when you go in because generally speaking this area is going to be very heavy on stamina drainage. There we go. Wait for our stamina to recharge a little bit. There we go. And come up. You want to make sure you look up at every point because enemies actually will drop from the ceiling like those small Akronos that we've found before. So a red ruby in here, which is very good. All right, good, more money and a ruby, very good. We have 900 rubies, so I wish I had 9,000 rubies. I almost said 9,000, ha <laughs> ha! So yeah, you're pretty much gonna be exploring a lot of this mine. In we go. Guess what, not one, but two Skelkondras. If you don't kill all the right species, you're gonna not be able to kill them. There we go. They're dead now. In case you're wondering if it drops anything but red rubies, I'm gonna warn you right now. No, it doesn't. You can shield bash them to stop their attack, and they actually get stunned for it, and it, it's easier horizontal swiping it. Letting you know right now, there is no easy way to get through the door. There is one way to get over today, though. Kill these enemies quickly. Ow! There we go. Now you can't destroy these with normal method. You're actually gonna have to bomb them. Get rid of them because they're definitely gonna be annoying. You can't do anything with these sand mounds quite yet. There we go. More hearts, rubies, good. So we need to blow these up instead. Because bombs are typically your only way to blow things up. 
Very good. Very, very good. Very explosive. You can actually do, go away with it, get away with it. You don't want to use bombs, but you can use them if you so wish. Because of our extra bomb amount that I got before, in the previous, like, I don't know how many videos it was, that we managed to upgrade our bomb bag, so therefore we have more bombs added to us. So we don't have to too much. Now push it to the wall, climb all the way back up here, because there's actually a door over here. Open this door. And you reach the middle hub area of the game. Let me remind, because this is actually where the main key is for where you need to go. Warn you right now, you're going to be running into going back here a lot. So, let's go and grab bombs. We can't exactly go through the gate because it won't let us through. You want to actually grab this as well as make sure you bomb these, I think, crates? I'm surprised they're not just piles of ash at this point. It's a desert. There we go. Very good. Warning right now, the game will throw out, guess what? Choo-choos. Electric choo-choos. Recommendation, throw bombs at them because they explode instantly. I would not recommend attacking electric choo-choos wildly like you did in the previous choo-choos because wild choo-choos like that, gentu- I hope I can get that. Yay, I can. Good. A chest. Of course, and it contains a small key that you're going to be using very easily and very quickly. Seeds, good. Now, I'm warning you right now, if you try jumping up the ledge, you're actually going to jump down to the pit below. So keep an eye on where you jump and fall, because that way you don't basically waste your time. Like I said, this desert area can be confounding and confusing at best. Alright, back here again. Now, you're warning right now, you, unless you leave the dungeon and come back, enemies will not respawn. Just warning you right now in case you're worried. Open the key to the room to the right, or left. You find yourself a little hub area. These enemies are known as Freaks. This is a creature is cowardly in nature. It will expose an array of densely packed defensive spines when approached or provoked. If a heart defeated zero of them, these guys explode! Easy way to defeat them. Seed them, seed them, seed them, and wait until the specs vanish. You want to make sure you hit them when their seeds are not out. Seeds out. Spikes aren't out so that you don't actually, you know, get hit. I'm warning you right now, they respawn. Very, very frequently. More, and it fell to the bottom of that area. You want to climb all the way up. Alright, we're over here now. We want to actually go over here. Nice, more of these. Now, you're probably wondering if you can get up there. You can't get up there normally. You're going to actually have to use your beetle again, because guess what? This game uses a lot of the gold items in the areas. Hook beetle is technically the gimmick of Lineru, so keep in mind... Alright, that was the way you don't want to do it. You actually want to do it like this, and make sure you turn all the way, because the turning speed is quite bafflingly slow. I'll say that's the one big weakness of the beetle itself. You can actually blow yourself up if you wanted to, but I'm not going to recommend it. Yeah. Good. Get that out of the way. Let's climb up. And press the switch, because that activates a time shift stone opening. Tip off it, it will close on you. So, let's go and I said let's go and throw the beetle at it. You're probably wondering why I'm using the gyro controls rather than just using the controller. Unfortunately, the game is gyro focused. Time shift stone moves everything backwards. Guess what? If you played the original Zelda games, guess what these enemies are called? If you guessed Bemos, you'd be correct. Let's see what Fi has to say about them. Bemos. This is an ancient security mechanism. Its weak point is the uh, eye. The eye is also a weapon. It fires a focused energy beam. It is a laser beam. Not joking. I have a 100% chance of failure adding a attempt to strike the eye of your sword while it's still on top of the pedestal. Eric may use a weapon that can strike at high targets. Conversely, you can also lower its head to a height and your sword can reach. That's pretty much what you have to do. However, as soon as you do that, it will focus there. You want to do a sword stab and you want to hit it. If you've noticed... 
Yeah, a conveyor belt. Keep an eye out, because these things are fast. There we go. Got another Beamos. They will always drop blue rubies, never any other ruby type. Just keep an eye out. Physically enough, be careful of the spikes, because they can hurt a lot. And if you get trapped in that electric damaging area, you can actually get stuck if you run out of stamina. And as a result of that, you'll die from electric. Press the switch down. Now we can go that way and get that chest. Down we go. Keep an eye out and run. Because guess what? You're going to be running a lot, which is why it drops stamina fruit. I'm not sure what can bear about drop stamina flute, but I'm not. Flute. I always do that. I always say the wrong name, like stamina flute, stamina oracle, stamina whatever. All right, let's climb all the way up and climb over here. Kill the Spinos. There we go. Bro defeated three of them. That's not exactly a bad record. Red Ruby. All right, whatever. Admittedly, though, the Lanhair Mining Facility is an area where some new players can get confused. Like last time, go across. Now that we're up here, you can't open that gate, so you're gonna have to do what you did last time and run, 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 run. Be careful if the Beamos is forward facing to you. Be careful. You can actually do that fast. If you don't do it fast and try to run away from it, it's actually make it easier to laser snipe you. So keep an eye on it. It's is recommended. Good, we got that out of the way. Now we don't actually have to worry about walking. We can actually just let the ride take us there. Walking will just increase the speed. Let's open this area. I'm going to point to something out that probably no one really bothers to check. It's still active. Unless there's a loading zone in between, that time shift zone will not deactivate unless you activate another one. Another of those enemies, Florks, just bomb it so that way you can get rid of it. Generally speaking, be careful of this area because guess what? Spikes! In general, you want to make sure you slingshot these and destroy them. Because they will stab you. And it will hurt. A lot. Keep an eye out where spikes will generally pop up is generally the best way to do about it. You want to go all the way this way. And climb up. In this chest, guess what? It's the dungeon item! The Gust Bellows! It's an ancient mystical art device capable of blowing an endless gust of wind. If you play Smash Brothers, guess what? This is your easy to win tool. We got our fifth main item. Yeah, the Gust Bellows generally blows away stand. There is hidden items underneath the sand, so you want to keep an eye on them. You can actually do something funny. Yeah, sand reacts differently to anything. Funnily enough, this sand blowing ability is very useful because you can throw an enemy flying. So yeah, but the radius is technically small. You want to keep an eye out where you go so that way you don't fall off. Blue Ruby, I don't care that much. These Florks actually get thrown flying if they get hit by this very easily. You actually want to throw them into a wall. There we go. You want to make sure your gyro controls are also safe and better. If you're concerned, you can throw a bomb at these areas and just destroy them with that. I recommend waiting for the folks to respawn, though, because it's actually a faster way to do so. Oh, hello. Die, 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 die. No, 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 no. If any direction you blow, it's technically where it goes, so... You hear me say blow a lot, but just try not to laugh. Because that's pretty much what you're going to do. I don't know why I'm laughing. 
You're gonna open this chest because you're gonna need to open this one. And there's gonna be another attack me. You got a goddess plume! Remember, say this item was dropped by the goddess in a long forgotten area. Era, it is as near each other. View over, behold. Yeah, that's a random chest. Die, please. Die, please. You can actually climb back all the way up and get up here, no problem. So don't worry in case you're concerned about, you know, getting stuck in an area you don't want to be yet. This way, good. You can actually get damaged by the explosion, just keep an eye out in case you're wondering. So let's go this way and see if there's anything over here. There's a blocked off section for whatever reason. Green, blue ruby, not worth it. So let's go across. We've opened the map all the way. Now you want to climb all the way up, of course. Now you have over a thousand rubies. Good grief. Everywhere I go. Sand. Sandy cheeks. Yeah, that's hilarious. All right, whatever. Loading zone. Because of that, the time shift zone turns off. Now, in case you can't recall, yeah, we're back here again. We're basically going back to where we were starting. More keys. Let's kill them. More enemies. Keys. Because we loaded again, the enemies respawn. There we go. Probably wondering how the heck are we supposed to get over here and out of here because technically speaking, you technically can't get out. Because of that entrance that we have access to, we can actually use the gust bellows in the previous room that we couldn't do before. You're gonna want to go back to previous areas with your gust bellows to blow things away. Drop down here, and of course, take care of these stinking monsters. They're very annoying as enemies, and I do not like them at all. They, generally speaking, are probably one of my least favorite enemies doing it. Gyro. Yeah, you're gonna run into these things a lot in this time. Yep, that's the great. It goes a point out, but since it's a activation switch, it's gonna turn back. You want to go back and push. I said push. Oh, for crying out loud. Yeah, if you don't get rid of all of it, it's not going to register and it's actually going to make you jump over it. Doesn't matter what angle you're at, as long as the button's pressed at any angle, it will open. And in case you're wondering if that has to activate the cutscene every single time, it does. Every time. Never any doubt. Let's go through this door. more of these guys. So, you really have to make sure you get these guys out of the way. You can actually blow them on top to get rid of them. I'm up. Wait for a stamina recharge because it's going to take forever. Get across. In case you're worried about these guys, you can just skyward strike them and never mind. An easy solution though is just to throw a bomb and blow up multiple at the same time. You can actually do a combo with just a slingshot that just kills them quickly. This way you don't have to deal with them whenever you need to. In case you're wondering if I'm swinging wildly is a great idea for these enemies in particular. There we go. Get rid of him. More rubies. You typically use Gus Bellows to save your slingshot ammo, but in case you're wondering, I don't. Like last time, you want to use Gus Bellows again. Time trip stone. Guess what happens? All this sand, by the way? Gone! 
You don't have to worry about the sand anymore. You're pretty much fine in this area. If you turn direction on this area right here, you generally can get near an apartment. Controls. You want to make sure you turn on the red area. That way it goes forward. Jump over there and activate this pinwheel. And if you're familiar with the pinwheel before, you're going to actually re recognize it a lot. Get it all the way to the top. Activates permanently so you don't have to worry about it too much. Generally speaking, you want to keep an eye on this area. Push this closer. You'll never have a moment where you're trapped in this game. Just warning you right now. Let's open this treasure chest. Another monster horn. That's just very good, actually, because monster horns still can't be collected normally. Of course, in the blue area this time, and push ourselves backwards. Cross. And we must. One. A two. A three. A three. And there's a new enemy over there. Man, we're running into a lot of enemies today. This is a Centrio. The security drone was built in an ancient times. It is armed with missiles fired from its central turret and firing bombs from both of its sides. Yeah. Ancient technology had missiles. And it says you can repel the missiles fired with the central turret with the certain items at your disposal, such as your shield. Keep an eye out every time you fire, it's fired by it. These bombs are gonna hit you, but Skyward Strikes destroy them. You can't destroy them at the distance if you want to. Nope. These guys blow up and drop a lot of rubies, so be careful where they drop, because you're gonna miss out on a lot of rubies for it. the red area to make sure this thing go closer. The normal way you wanted to go actually is with climbing, but I didn't bother. There we go. Push, 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 push. Very good. Money! Climb, 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 climb. More Mimos. Hi, Bimi. How's it going? Let's pull this one out. Good. Very good, actually. Woohoo! Two Skull Condras again. Shield Bash is overpowered. <laughs> no lie. Shield Bash. So overpowered. Blasted bug. Die. You again? There we go. Let's just grab this. Pull it out. Pull it out like this. Because you want to climb all the way up there to get to the next area. Push. And push. Just take a lot of stamina, so keep an eye on it. Time shift four. Very good, actually. In case you're wondering, there's no way to open that door normally. Well, at least. Normally that way. More of these. You can actually do Skyward Strike and make this easier on yourself. Just keep an eye out where you swing. In case you're wondering why I'm not worried about those jelly blobs, it's because I have too many to be doing. There we go. Got rid of all of them. Good grief. That was annoying. 
Blow the sand away to contain another amber relic, so keep an eye on this. Alright, so we just need to go over this way. There are two ways you can actually hit this time shift stone. You can either use a slingshot or what I can do. Is skyward strike it. You want to do the vertical movement. I just wanted to show the horizontal movement would fail every time. Ah, another new enemy. All these ancient enemies. In case you're wondering, it won't open unless you defeat this enemy. This is an Armos. If familiar from Wind Waker, you've seen these guys. The security and defense mechanism was developed long ago. It will attack anything that enters the security perimeter. You saw the lines on the round, you know the perimeter. Wind Waker's its weak point is its mouth, but it requires some specific measure to make it open its mouth. The measure is Gus Brothers. There we go. The gates open. And not just that gate, but that gate. They wouldn't open until all the enemies were destroyed. Or at least the Armos was destroyed. Armos generally can be either a very annoying enemy or a very easy enemy. If you're familiar with Armos and Windmaker, they generally were easy because you could bomb them. Anyway, we've got the dungeon map a bit later than what we needed it, but I digress. We actually have more of the map open to us, which is very good for treasure chests. So that's out of the way. Let's go and go down here. You guys are wondering why I'm not worried about the globs? It's because I have 15 of them. I don't need to worry about them that much. Open Sesame. Now we're back in the main hub area. Like last time. Bombs. Press the switch and you actually open the gate. We can get back to the main area if we so wish. And I think we're going to do this and stop for now. So next time on Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, we're going to be heading on to the middle area and hopefully finding Zelda. See you all next time.